Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Godot's sub-viewport node to save your shaders as images. This is just one of the many ways you can use the sub-viewport node, but this particular method has been incredibly useful in my workflow. Currently, I use this approach in my procedural world generator to process a height map through a series of sequential steps. These steps usually require me to capture an image of the output of one shader to then be used in a sampler 2D input in the next shader. Alright, so here we are in Godot. Let's make a new 2D scene. I'll go ahead and add in a sub viewport node. We'll set the resolution of the sub viewport to 4096 by 4096. This is the resolution your image will be saved as. Next, we want to go down here to render target and set the update mode of the sub viewport to always. This is because if you call get texture on the sub viewport in the ready function, it takes a little bit of time for the texture to be available for use for the rest of the program. So when the texture becomes available, if the update mode is not set to always, it will not update the texture and you will get a black image. So whatever we add as a child to the sub viewport, we will see as the output. So I'll go ahead and add a color rect to the sub viewport. And I'll set the anchors preset to full rect. Now you can see the color rect on our sub viewport. So let's add a shader material to this color rect with a new shader. It could be any material you want, but I'll use a shader material because I often write shaders. Another way the sub viewport node could be useful to us is by using the output of the sub viewport as a texture for something else. So if you had another object with a material, you could set the albedo to a viewport texture and choose the sub viewport that uses that material. But for this, we don't need a viewport texture. All we need is a sub viewport. So let's set up the shader real quick. I'll just add a sampler 2D for a noise texture. And I'll set the color value of our shader to that noise texture. And I'll just add in my noise. I'll set the resolution of the noise to the same as the sub viewport and I'll add my noise. Reduce the frequency a little. Sweet. So now let's make a script for this scene that saves an image of the sub viewport. So first I'll make a reference to the sub viewport node. Down here in the ready function, we can call viewport.getTexture to load the sub viewport output as a texture. Then from the texture, we can call get image to get the texture as an image. But just like I said before, when this function get texture is called, it takes a moment for the texture to be available for use. This process runs on another thread, so the script will continue to run even if the image isn't available. To make sure that the image is available when we call get image, right before it you can put an await statement and we want to wait for the rendering server dot frame post draw signal. This signal is emitted when the rendering server has finished updating all viewports. So now that we have our image, we can save the image as an image texture or an image, whatever you want. I'll make a variable called image texture and call create from image. Then I'll write the path that I want the image texture to save to. And then we just call resource saver dot save with the image texture and the path. Now let's run the scene to see if it works. There you go. If you want to see how I use this method in my procedural biome generator, the link to that video is right here. Hope this is useful to someone. Thanks for watching.